So, and you bring up an interesting feature about like, um, you know, automotive standards and, and quality. Um, you know, we, we work in all sorts of industries, you know, off highway products on highway, automobiles, toys, you know, you name it, we, we've worked in it. Um, is there, when you, are you thinking mostly from a, I guess, is there a subset of characteristics that you're looking to bring over from the automotive industry? Um, I guess the reason I ask is because we have seen like some people burden themselves excessively while trying to meet some of these things that the auto industry does because they are, you know, in volume cycle significantly higher than some of these other products. And they're, they're yeah. trying to replicate some of that stuff, but, um, yeah. you know, the, the capital expenditure that some of these vehicle programs have is, you know, mind boggling in comparison to some of these smaller, you know, low volume, you know, products. So I guess, uh, you know, what, yeah. what really are you trying to target from like an automotive perspective? Yeah, no, it's, it's a, it's a really good question. Um, and, 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 and I think you also, you mentioned a really good point, which is like, we're, we're talking about a sector that is like a, a different, uh, sort of order, order of magnitude in terms of, mm -hmm. volume. so, so like, you know, easy to say that you're going to test something to hundred thousand miles or, or whatever, when you're, you're going to, you know, spend a billion dollars on launching a new sure. vehicle program or something like that. Um, so for us, I mean, I, I guess, I guess what I'd say is you have to be really smart about it. Um, so, so, so as a starting point, the, the standards are different in the RV industry as, as compared to the, compared, uh, as compared to the automotive industry. So, you know, both are vehicles that are, you know, regulated by NHTSA and the DOT, but the standards are quite different because, um, in the automotive case, you have to go through, you know, a full homologation program, crash testing, all of that. Um, in the RV case for towables specifically, um, you are, you are not allowed to have occupants in a towable it's like it's you know regulated by the dot and so there's not the same you know homologation crash testing standard that exists there are still standards like you have to have a bumper and it has to be this high off the ground and, and things like that so this so, so the standards are, are are different um and then i'd say like to go to go maybe like one layer layer further um what what we do and in and, and a lot of re, re, sort of reason or in a lot of ways like the reason we can exist is is because of the global automotive industry. So global automotive has put, you know, billions and billions of dollars into the development of very high quality components like high voltage batteries and, uh, and drive systems and OVCs and onboard chargers. And, um, and we can benefit from that. In fact, we have to benefit from that. Like we, we, we cannot uh, raise, you know, a hundred you know, billion dollars or whatever it's gonna take to like develop all that stuff ourselves. Um, but we can rely on a, on a supply base that is that is quite robust, and all, each of that, those components um, goes through very rigorous, uh, you know, standards. And then what we're doing is we are we are we are putting we have to put it all together and then apply, you know, our own standard at sort of the vehicle level. And there and there is where I kind of go back to we have to be really smart about it. And what we're doing is we're, we're looking at like a combination of um, the standards that that, that exists, which. Um, in some cases are, are, um, you know, statutory in other cases are like in industry standards. So, so there's like the, the RBI, the industry association, which has a lot of like recommendations. They're not, they're not necessarily statute. Um, and then we're applying our kind of automotive experience, uh, to, to decide, you know, what, what are the right, you know, testing regimens? Like, what are the things that we need to do to, to be, you know, really confident in the, you know, quality and reliability, safety of this product. The most important thing that we do is, is really related to functional safety, which is also kind of a, a you know, very sort of like automotive term, like how, right. do, how do we absolutely ensure that, that our product is functionally safe? Um, and, and that is where we, you know, obviously don't, don't, don't make any compromises. So when you, you know, with respect to like a lot of the high voltage components, um, things of that nature, so it sounds like you're sourcing most of that, which I, I think is smart. You know, you don't necessarily want to get into like the wire bonding game or, and building a lot of your own stuff with that, with that, um, I'm not sure what your volume set is. And I, I don't even know if you, you have kind of a target there, but, uh, I, to me, it sounds like it, it's not a good idea to try and pursue anything. Um, like I would say truly proprietary in a sense of like unique and designed in house or, um, you know, like a, something that you're delivering as a package to supplier to build for you. Um, Like, you know, in some of the literature, it does, there's aspects that kind of discuss like a proprietary drive system. I guess what, what then makes it proprietary if, if you're, and I, I think it's a good idea, leveraging essentially the supply base for existing off the shelf components 
Is it the, um, you know, the aspect of how it's being a toe behind, which is essentially new and definitely not common that's powered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what, what would you say it is you do? It's yeah. <laughs> actually unique and proprietary. Um, no, no, so, so I, I would say, first of all, um, uh, we, we, we are, we, we don't leverage the supply base for everything. So, sure. so like if you, if you think about the Tesla approach, like the Tesla approach is like vertically integrate Very. down to the, to the atom. And I remember, you know, conversations, uh, with, with Elon, uh, related to, you know, largely related to like product cost. And, and Elon would always have this perspective of like, what is the cost of the atoms? Right. You know, like, like he doesn't care like what it costs to transform those atoms into like a printed circuit board or something. He's like, what is the cost of like the atoms? And, and so that's, that's one, that's one way to do it. Um, the other way to do it, I would say is like, um, you know, may, maybe where the automotive industry was when it was kind of in a you know bad place, like, you know, 20 years ago, where they had sort of like pushed everything out to everything suppliers out with, and, uh -huh. and it was like literally like a, a, an exercise of like specking a vehicle and then, you know, plugging in all the pieces. Um, and, and I don't think that's quite right either. And, and so for us, we are a little bit more moderated. So when, so when you think about something like a, a battery pack, um, we don't, we don't need to, you know, go vertically integrate down to like the, the cell level. There's a, there's a really good supply base of high voltage rectilinear battery packs that you can package, you know, in between frame rails. And, and so that's not something that's like smart for, our to go, for us to go do ourselves. As you think about some of like the power electronics, we're doing actually something that's like really novel in that we're effectively combining a, um, an electric vehicle powertrain um, with a home solar system and a bunch of like AC appliances and consumer electronics. And like that hasn't quite been done before. And, and what that means is that we do have to invent some of our own hardware um, and many of our own controllers. And we definitely need to uh, invent a lot of our own software. Um, so so, so I, I would say probably the most proprietary thing that we do is all of the controls. Like we need to be able to integrate everything, everything together uh, very well, both things that we're sourcing and things that we're doing ourselves. And then um, we, we need to control it um, in a way that has sort of never been done before. And that kind of a, a applies to both the, the living side of, of the, you know, the RV experience and even more so to the driving side. So you think about what it takes to control um, a, a, a drive system that is, that is really secondary to the primary drive system on your tow vehicle. Like, how do you do that? Sure. That's, that's never really been done before. And, and that's something that, 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 um, that we've, we've spent a lot of time working on. And I mean, it makes sense to me, right? Like, and those are the two use cases, right? Like, I don't want to say that the customer is not directly interfacing with the battery, but they're not necessarily, but they are interfacing with how it tows behind the characteristics of it behind your vehicle while you're towing it someplace. Um, and obviously once it's set up and you're boondocking or whatever you're doing with respect to that, um, so it does make sense to like to place a lot of emphasis there and the um and really kind of and hammer that out um i guess when you look at um so it looks like you guys are doing like a, a very composite intensive you know body structure which i think is is very interesting um i think you're able to leverage a lot of oe like um design executions with essentially a like a tooling burden that's lower um, and, a, and, a, and a volume threshold that's much more um, amicable to what you're probably going to end up producing. 